to Life Support Live, the weekly live show that explores how Star Trek can help us to boldly go in our own lives to better ourselves and the rest of humanity. Whoa, you've been studying up that, that former starship captain that we all know so well, I'm, as he I'm, once I'm said. I'm getting good at reading my notes, Larry. <laughs> Very good. Well, as another famous starship captain that's about to get his own series shooting now, well, at least publicly acknowledged, he's been doing it for a month, <gasps> wherever our mission takes <laughs> As he once said, we'll make sure to have a little fun along the way. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I am psychologist Dr. Ali Matu. And I'm Dr. Trek Larry Nemechek. One of us is a real doctor. Uh, we'll leave it to you to figure out who that might be. <laughs> um, on this week's episode, we're talking about perceptions of time. Larry, it just feels like yesterday that we... Uh, <laughs> We we were I don't know I don't know what we were doing yesterday but it feels like just history. <laughs> <laughs> My perception of time is totally off. Um, so folks, let us know in the comments what's your favorite episode of Star Trek that played with ideas of perception of time that changed the perception of time. Now, but before we get into that, yes, Larry. I just want to say as we talk about this though, it's fun. Everybody loves to talk about the time travel episodes. Right. Let's not look at it on an epic scale, guys. Today, let's look at the time episodes on an introspective scale, okay? The little time episodes, right? Not galaxy-changing, alternative, timeline-spanning. Although, you know, there were alternative timelines that were little adventures. But um, think of it in terms of the smaller aspects of time and our perceptions of time, even when we weren't changing the course of mighty uh, quantum universes. Yes. Right? I agree. I yes. agree. Okay. Yeah. Because right, that's, that's uh, what we talked about, so I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's why we're calling it Perceptions of Time. And I think it'll start to make sense once we get into the episode. Uh, mm -hmm. But, Larry, if this is, um, uh, speaking of time, if this is the first time people are here at Life Support Live, uh, what are they in for? How, how very non lineal of you. How very non profit. <laughs> I think in very four-dimensional terms. <laughs> That's true. No, hey, everybody, welcome. And if you're one of the veterans, you probably already jumped in the chat. Uh, you're probably, we got you, hopefully we got, you got all your hellos out of the way, or you've got many more to go uh, for everybody that you recognize. And if it's somebody new there, uh, whether you're here or you're seeing somebody, remember that this is Life Support Live. We boldly go through uncertain times every week. Even when the pandemic is over, I think we may keep going, but this is a child of the pandemic our failed uh, con that we're coming up on the one-year anniversary of not doing it at WonderCon last year. But we will be there this year in virtual form. But we're here every week at this time uh, talking about a theme from Star Trek. Yeah, uh, and then looking at it through a mental health lens or vice versa. That's another thing we leave for you to decide. But we have a lot of fun along the way. We <laughs> geek out on a lot of Trek. There is no quiz tomorrow. But I'll take you deep diving behind the scenes with my K3 and assorted chatter. And Dr. Ali will lay out some uh, some points and lessons. And we'll all talk about Star Trek case history as the patient. <laughs> and feel free to jump in with whatever you want to jump in. We, we will try to dive into the chat as much as we can. And yes, Twitchers, we will try to be with you. But we may not always be right there on top of it if you're ever on Twitch. Um, Facebook, you're only seeing the comments from Facebook, but if you're on YouTube and Twitch, you're seeing every platform's comments. And where are we on the great Discord experiment, Dr. Um, Ali? If you click the link in the description below, you will uh, be able to join our Discord. And because we're on a time dilation, um, I forgot to plug in my mic, so thank you for that, Scott. Hopefully this sounds a heck of a lot better. Um, Larry, are you hearing me a little bit better now? I'm well. You know, I'm hearing you through the Skype, so you sound just as good as always. What well, uh, I just hope our picture's not as scrappy as it looks here, but I think no one said anything yet, so hopefully. Okay, hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> folks, my sound is now much better. Um, it should be because I plugged in the mic. Anyway, it's the little things. It's the little thing. <laughs> You know, oh my I gosh. Said, it's high time you did, but I didn't want to go there. So, okay. Yeah, no, Christoph just said all these sounds way better now. And then uh, Melanie wants to know what's on my shirt. Well, today I have, um, boom, a little original gangster, gangster Spock 
right there for you. Um, all right. So, oh, Larry. Oh, oh. So that's not a that's not a piece of the action. Uh, Vulcan sign. Okay. It's um, you know, it's uh, it's whatever you want it to be, Larry. Because um, when you say original gangster, I'm thinking Oxmix or Cracko or who are you talking about? Okay. <laughs> I'm going all eye ocean on you, but that's okay. Let's let's hey, move it's on. It's all good. And let's move on. <laughs> well, as long as it's not a mustard stain on your T-shirt, then we're good. Okay. <laughs> so let's um um let's talk about why we're talking about this, Larry. This week is the one year anniversary of when um, the World Health Organization right. declared um, COVID nineteen a uh, global pandemic, and um, so we decided uh, we'll, it was time to do it. Yes, yes. Um, and looking back on the one year anniversary now of, of uh, COVID-19 becoming the pandemic that, that disrupted all of our lives and that triggered all these shutdowns, where um, this is actually, today is the one year anniversary of when Northern California shut down, and I yeah. believe LA shut down two days later. Um, I was actually in LA a year ago filming something. It was the last normal thing I ever did. <laughs> well, that explains much. Okay. Oh, gosh. But um, through this year, our perception of time has really changed. Um, I, I think there's been a number of instances mm -hmm. here on the show, and you and I have talked about that, how it feels like we might be right. in a rut. Um, and looking back on the last year, Larry, there's very little I can tell you about. Like, if you ask me what I did during the summer... I can't really tell you much. The same thing I did, I did in the fall. It's the same right, thing I did right. in the winter. It's <laughs> right. The only real time that sticks out to me is when things were shutting down, and then mm -hmm. also the wildfires here in California. Uh, and that's about it. That's, that's about it. That's, so yeah. per, my perception of time has been warped by the last year, and I'm, I'm guessing you've had a similar experience. Well, I, yeah, and I... I remember really being oriented and thinking, wow, well, there goes the... <laughs> I had this memory of the Oklahoma City bombing. We had moved to L.A. from Oklahoma City in mm. uh, August, and the Oklahoma City bombing happened in April. Oh, and wow. it's And uh, April 22nd used to be celebrated big time as the first... The, the run of 89, the land run that first settled the interior of Oklahoma. And it was always April 22nd. It was the day that everybody... You know, little kids marked it at school and all, you know. And I remember thinking on April 15th, well... There goes uh, 89 a day this year. But I remember when everything was falling down, uh, and not to, I'm not trying to belittle the, you know, the sanctity of the bombing and, the, and all that. All that was wrapped up in that. I'm not trying to be flip about it. But I'm just saying it was weird how that happened. But I, as, as the curtains were falling here, it was, like, it was like that disaster you saw. It was like that speedboat you saw way off that got to be a bigger boat. And then you kept thinking, well, surely he's going to turn. Surely he's going to turn. Or that big truck coming at you. And 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 it the the big truck didn't turn. The big boat did not, you know, bow out and let you have your own wake. It hit it smacked you amidships, and it got closer and closer and closer. As you kept thinking, well, surely this will go away, like they all the rest of them have. You know, we hear about rumblings of things before. Ebola got scary a few years back, but it was basically nipped in the bud for America and most of the world. And this one didn't. But I remember thinking, wow, well, there goes. St. Patrick's Day for all the bars, but you know how little limited thinking. But it was it was weird because yes, we had the random occurrences, and then you all up north had it, and then um, and it was kind of like, well, this is weird, but we're all kind of going along, and the and you, the and the people up in Seattle, they were the Seattle cases, and then the randos in Northern California, and then boom, everything exploded, and yes, the four, the five counties in the Bay area yeah. shut down. And then I just – I'm looking at the clock. I just remember that about this time we were. But I remember looking at my calendar now. I remember everything felt like it had fallen down by – I guess you're saying the 15th here, a couple of days before St. Patrick's Day. But I, the thing that got it for me was that was um, the Thursday before, which was the 11th. People were already panicking. I mean the toilet paper was already going off the shelves by right, hand. Right. People were getting weird. And there were, there were the brave people like – Blithely going on like nothing was happening, but there was a jitterier and jitterier undercurrent that soon swamped everything. But I remember trying to go out at the grocery shop and have my local Ralph's here was uh, was like 
things were starting to disappear and get crazy. And random things were going like people were buying, you know, we talk about flour and people were starting to bake bread and, and the toilet paper and all the paper products and all the chemical products. You couldn't buy Lysol to save yeah, your life. And all the cleaning uh, stuff. Yeah. And bleach yeah. and chlorine and all of that. But it was weird. like one night I was trying to buy potatoes and I had to go to I finally went to a little mom and pop market that had had their cut up, banged up potatoes put away to toss. And that's where I found some potatoes. And anyway, it was the night that I was checking out in a self-serve line and the, the clerk that was assigned to patrol them. And I'll never forget this. There was a, like a middle aged woman who was on her cell phone, very distraught. And she came up to the, the clerk to Belinda, her name was. I'll never forget this, who I knew, and I was sitting there doing my thing, and she's at her little stand to oversee the self-serves, and this woman came up like yelling at somebody on the phone, and she came up to her, and she goes – and she was exasperated, this, this lady, this customer, and she finally throws her cell phone at the, at the overseer, at Belinda, and says, would you please tell my mom that I'm not lying to her when I tell her I can't buy anything? <laughs> and, and it was like so weird, and she's like, yes – she took this woman's phone and she goes, yes, yes, ma'am. I'm saying, no, we don't have any flour. <laughs> yes, we have no eggs. And like all these basic things, random oh, things. Oh my gosh. And she was like, she was, she yelled. She's like, would you please tell my mother I'm not lying to her? <laughs> and I was just like, it was just getting more. And that was like, to me, like that was the beginning of the pandemic. It was like, that was such a surreal yeah. moment. It went on for two or three moments. I mean, it went on and on for a while. And finally she got off the phone with the woman, like, I'm not your what your mom's counselor. I'm sorry, but she's like, here, trust this lady. She works here. I mean, it was it was bizarre. And after that, I'm like, holy shit, we're we're in for it. And you know, a lot more yeah. happened down the pike. The next week, I had to go with Janet to her office and help her. Get, the next Friday, like they gave everybody a a one day to get out and do your stuff and then get back home, like right. get make things well, okay. And, uh, I think there's a there's a reason why your memories are so vivid of that time. Oh, and, yeah. and we'll talk about that in the counselor's log. And the, um, the memory I have of this weekend um, of a year ago, I, so I flew down to LA uh, to film this uh, YouTube short series called Sleeping With Friends. Um, I think I, it came out last May and we shared it around here, but it's, it was mm -hmm. a reality competition science show about sleep. Anyways, I was filming it this weekend and on the flight down, my flight down from, um, I was flying down from San Jose to LA, full flight, completely full. That flight is always full. There's always yeah, Northern and Southern flight. California. Yeah, it's a commuter flight. It's All like flights, five minutes, an hour or something. Yeah. 45 minutes, it's always packed. It's usually pretty affordable, a uh, pretty full flight. Um, completely full on the way down. Um, filming during the weekend, they hired extra people just to clean all the surfaces, constantly cleaning surfaces. <laughs> but, but like we were all right next to each other, Larry. Like filming is always so take quarters. It was all and... about surfaces at first, remember? At Everything first, was about yeah, surfaces. Yeah. Touching and washing every 30 seconds. So or the washing moment, 30 seconds. The moment you grabbed a water bottle, someone would come and wipe that whole area down, you know? But like we were on top of each other. We had no idea that this thing was airborne in um, and, and aerosols. Anyways, um, the flight back up, Larry, there were three of us. Mm -hmm. There were more, there was more crew on the airplane than there were passengers. Um, the, f the flight back was so eerie and I was so scared um, because I, I knew we were like in a different world yeah. at that point. Yeah, and it just slapped you. It yeah, was just like, yeah. And, wham. and, if you look back, I look back at my emails from that time, and I was uh, there's been a lot that's been shared um, on the internet. Now, the New York Times did a New York one year ago as things were shutting down, and Broadway, all the Broadway leaflets said tonight's performance has been canceled. Um, Broadway is closed. We will be reopening April 16, 2020. You know, there was there was this idea that um, well, we're gonna wait until things get back to normal. Um, and here we are one year later. Mm -hmm. So, um, I remember that time vividly and I don't remember that much vividly after that. And so our perception of time has changed. And as our, as our, um, lovely lifers are reminding us, 
We're also doing this the day before the time changes. <laughs> Quite literally, our perception of time is about to change tonight in all the places that observe. Uh, are we going to the savings time or are we going to standard time? This is time? no time to talk about time. We don't have the time. <laughs> I've got to leave something for you. Yeah, okay. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So um, speaking speaking of Star Trek, why don't we um, open up what the... What a concept. Uh, yes. Yeah, why don't we open up the briefing room here and and start talking a little bit about, yeah. um, about Star Trek. And when it comes and... to perceptions of time, there's there's a lot for us to draw from. And of course, time travel or time dilation yeah. stories show that. But there's also some non-time travels related stories that kind of show this too. The one, um, the one that most feels like the pandemic to me, Larry, is mm. cause and effect. And <laughs> this is the Next Generation episode where they keep repeating the same day. Yeah, right. they're stuck. It's the Groundhog Day. Slope. It's the time it's loop. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's Star Trek does Groundhog Day. Mm -hmm. And um, it was Brennan's first big story. He wrote it as an intern. Oops, I K three oh, on you. Go ahead. What? Oh, please, yeah. K three on me all the time. I love it. Uh, <laughs> that was Brennan's first weird shit story. Yes. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't know that. Um, I love that episode, and I, I love. I love everything about that episode. Um, but it it's the one that most feels like twenty twenty to me because mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it felt like I got into a rut. That like the same thing was happening every day. I was doing the same things. I wasn't having any new experiences. And um, in the in the episode, you just wanted to punch the insurance guy. Oh wait, wrong, wrong. Okay. <laughs> right, right. Although sometimes, yeah, Larry. Uh, <laughs> yes, um, but in in the episode they start to predict the same thing like the poker mm -hmm. game is 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 when things are revealed and while self-aware yeah. and and yeah they become aware that they're trapped in this thing um that hasn't quite happened to me but it does feel like um it's less the fear of are we trapped in this time loop but more the exhaustion of being mm -hmm. stuck in this time loop um i think zahir in the comments earlier said um um, things are starting to feel episodic, right? It, it felt like things right. were just repeating over and over again. So that's one that really sticks out to me, being very pandemic-esque. Uh, yes, well, uh, pandemic. I see. I haven't. I haven't thought of it in that term. I just this whole notion of we say time, and people love to go to the big, you know, the, like yesterday's Enterprise or or Future's End on on next on uh, Voyager. Uh, but these little, I mean, if you think about it, the very first time episode, it gets overlooked all the time, is is the naked time, right? Yes. At the very end of it, they, they instead of crashing into the planet, they they cold start the engines and you can't you can't <laughs> start antimatter cold. You've got to have 30 minutes. But they <laughs> they go back three days, you know, and, and Kirk says, you know, oh, my God, not those three days. That they just had lived through, but that's really like the first time Star Trek dealt with any kind of a time. If it's a little tiny moment, and we didn't see the three days they went through, what they felt like, right? But um, you know, then we get then we have City on the Edge and Forever and all the other time shows, and then we're off and running with the rest of Star Trek. But yeah, this was I very intentionally was we were saying this is about perception of time because the way we're feeling right now. And part of this, I mean, we almost went down this tangent, but we didn't. But part of this is is our perception of time when things feel off and askew. Do we want to race and get back to normal or what is normal? And 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 we that kind of comes up as a theme in some of these these episodes. But basically, it's it's all from the personal perspective. It's not some big galaxy yeah. spanning epic event that we're all in together, even though we all are in together on the pandemic as my as the little broadcast it. I got so sick of it, Ralph's. We're all in this together. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it would go on and on. So, yeah. So, everybody come up with your ideas. Uh, mine, um, I was trying to think of, and, and, and the other thing is, we look at Star Trek time adventures, even the personal ones, and some of them are glib, right? Some of them are very surfacy, and they're just about the surface. Ex and, and if you look at the original series, aside from something great like, like um, City on the Edge, but... The one that comes to mind here is 
wink of an eye, not blink of an <laughs> eye, but wink of an eye. And it's fun because they're talking about phasing. And in, in a science fiction-y way, it was, the, it was one of the times when Star Trek played with that. And, you know, it was fun to see the phaser beam go in slow motion because the scalosians were sped up so fast. But the con- and I give you one picture of this, but the idea is that up, they were yeah. existing on two quantum timelines side by side, the sped up scalosian, you know, scalosian water time was so fast that they came off like a mosquito buzzing and you couldn't see. But the, that when somebody was taken out of that time loop, when they were in- cellularly injured enough, like the poor crewman there, the red shirt was, that they age quickly because they've ba- they've gone back to the regular time. I mean. It's all played for a very superficial, but there is a there is a danger there, and a, and, a, and a, but it got people thinking. It was an interesting, you know. It, again, it wasn't a time travel show, but it got you thinking about time as a dimension, and then and then um, you know even to something like, or something you could play with, and and yeah, the time and again is one that that it's 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 in a loop, it's fluid. But looking at all the different ways to think about time, much less how it affects us, but. Um, you know, Timescape at Next Generation might even be one that right. uh, it's fun to play with because, like, oh, some of the people are frozen and we're over here where we're not. And here's a boundary and here's a boundary where time is sped up and Picard's hand ages insanely and then he gets right. it back. Right. So they're all like, where do we go? Where do we not go? How, do we, how does that not happen? And how do we unfreeze, you know, all these kind of mind bending science fiction y, timey wimey things to play with. But you had a point that I'd forgotten till about the um, one of the Romulans was almost uh, uh, um, what am I trying to say here? A kind of an egotist, kind of like a timist about the whole thing. What were you saying? The, uh, the they found the Romulan the hubris. Uh, yeah, the hubris. yeah so, no, I think um, the arrogance. I, I like t- I like Timescape for many reasons. One, it's cool to see a runabout uh, in Next Generation. It just it the just isn't a runabout. Yes. Yeah, uh, the runabout just doesn't look. It, it doesn't look right with the against the Enterprise D. Um, it just it doesn't fit. It fits DS Nine really well. Oh, mind man, come on, it's all. You're just not the, used for a cinema. Someday, son. Someday, these shows are all gonna blend together, and no one's gonna care what little box they came to your to your home. <laughs> It's just a universe. Come on, That'll use the universe. That'll be the day. Hashtag uh, use the universe. Okay. <laughs> no, but you're yeah. That, that is the only episode where we see the rear of a runabout, right? Which is so weird. It's like TNG. Uh, <laughs> um, we, I'll leave that at that. I, I like timescape a lot. Time stopping that leaves you gobsmack. It's the back end of the runabout. <laughs> Please proceed, Governor. Okay. <laughs> right. I'm fine with the quantum singularity experiment that the Robulans did, leaving time in a completely ruptured state. Um, I'm fine with that. But that runabout, it's too, it's too boxy to be set against the, inter- the smooth Enterprise D. Anyway. It's a set too far. Okay. It's a set too far. Um, uh, okay, well, I, I had something actually Timescape. to say. Timescape. Hubris. Frozen disruptor Hubris. beams. Hubris yeah. of Romulans, yes. Yeah, so I think there is um, there is a parallel here about, um, and I'm not, not parallels, uh, that's a different time episode. Wow. Larry, we, we say time a lot in this episode. <laughs> don't we say have it. the time. time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're running out of time. We got to get to the, we got to get to the beat. Um, what is that in Star Wars? Okay. <laughs> Hubris. So the, the, the Romulans are experimenting with um, with new technology here, and um, they they don't really anticipate the potential consequences of uh, of experimenting with their quantum technology, their quantum drive, um, the singularity causing things that they do. Uh, and I think there's there's a bit of a parallel there here to the pandemic. Um, our hu- humanity pushing forward. And making more continuous contact with species that we 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 shouldn't, um, or bringing different species into close contact with each mm-hmm. other, which um, increases the chances that viruses can mutate and can um, can pick up aspects of of different um, different animals. Other uh, viruses mutate, eventually get to us. 
Um, there's a lot of uh, data suggesting this is how we got COVID. Mm -hmm. And if we keep pushing for further, if we keep pushing further, Jim, um, if we keep doing that, um, there's likely that... It must be yeah. drawn. Yeah. No ha! This far and not no farther. Um, you want to shut down all those open-air Romulan phase markets. Is that what it is? <laughs> yes, I do. Um <laughs> And well, I wanna, I wanna, um, I want us to really think about how f much farther are we going to be pushing things? Because if we, if we keep pushing things, and this is one of the great worries I have about the melting polar ice caps, there's a lot of stuff that is frozen in there, including bacteria and viruses from mm -hmm. thousands of years ago that we don't have any immunity to. So um, hubris um, is is tied to this episode, and hubris is tied to the pandemic as well. Yes, yes, a lot of room for hubris in all this. I mean, just talking about these these small time episodes. Um, well, I sent you some more. I think uh, what, the oh one that I here's here's another angle on this topic that we can throw out. Yeah. One was our perception of time itself. But also, what does our perception of time speeding up, slowing down? How do we how do we see other people in that? And there are, again, there are some yeah. episodes that were a little on the nose. But one that in all this that I wanted to go back to, and because rarely does <laughs> an animated episode, and I don't mean Lower Decks, I yes. mean the animated series, the original uh, one. Yes, the original one. It's it's T O A S now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is is a counterclock incident with with Captain April. I love it because it's Captain April and his wife, Doctor Sarah April. But it and it's it's schlocky and all that. It's like you know, it's like well, the shrinking ship, the, the shrinking ship, the shrinking <laughs> ship is one trope, you know. But the aging backward is and Rascals got into this with Next Gen kind of on a gimmicky level, but it was uneven, right? You just had six people, but on on uh, in in counterclock incident, everyone but. Well, everyone youthens, okay, but the Aprils were about to retire, so they remain adults. And the entire Enterprise crew is some, you know, within 10 years, they're all babies to preteens. Spock is one of the older ones. And April has to take command of the ship and get them back from this, this time pocket. And it's the whole point of the show is he was on his way to retire, and they were fine with it. But it, he was still a capable person, and he was still looking forward to his retirement. But it made the, – the whole point of the show was to rethink mandatory retirement ages, the little thematic mm -hmm. thing of even the – it was too good for Saturday morning kids. But that, that awareness that sometimes the way we perceive people in time might not always be so on the nose, and maybe we mm -hmm. should always stay a little open mind. You know, The way we see kids and adults and seniors and whatever – I mean I, I just like that as a you – know, that's a perception that we have. No one's in any kind of – well, they were at a weird special effect, but it was animated. It was cheap. But right. <laughs> here in our daily lives, maybe we should like check our perceptions of time applying to ourselves and other people. Like, oh, I'm too old for this or, oh, yes. I have, I'm yes. too young to do that. And maybe yeah. that's, you know, it just is always a healthy thing that we don't have to get off on a bandwagon. But it's just yeah. another aspect of this issue. And we don't need a big special effects budget to do that. That's something that just happens every day and yeah. that it makes us think. I don't know. Does that make sense? I, I, I like, yeah, I, I like that angle a lot. Um, you know, there are, there's a few things that are, um, uh, there are these developmental windows where it is very much, easier for us to learn something or um, if we learn at a later age it's just going to be very different. Language is, is one of those. So uh, the earlier you learn another language um, the easier it is um, during your childhood yes. years and during your teenage years. Um, those are critical windows where if you develop yeah, soft a language synapses. after that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But, 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 but outside of a few different things like that when it comes to skills you can mm -hmm. learn new skills throughout your entire life. Um, I, I, I like that angle, Larry, because I think we often do limit ourselves. Like, oh, I'm, it's, I'm too old to pick up um, this or that or to try something different. No, you're not. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the very cool things about being human. Uh, we're pretty flexible 
we're pretty flexible animals. Um, uh, there's a couple of examples that came up in our comments that I think is great. Cairo yep. says um, insurrection comes to mind when a niche um, uh, when mm -hmm. a niche teaches Picard that time can slow down within a moment if you hold on right. to it enough. So um, mindfulness um, and flow are kind of two states of mind that completely change your perception of time. So when we use mindfulness, which is really being fully present and aware, which is what we see in that moment in insurrection, time can very much um, feel like it's slowing down. Um, whether you are doing that be to be aware of nature around you, like in insurrection, mm -hmm. or you're using that to become aware of the food that you're eating, uh, whatever it might be, uh, mindfulness can slow things down. But then flow can, when you're really um, engaged in an activity and your, your ability is meeting the, the challenge, whether it is reading right. a good book, playing a good game of chess, um, uh, talking Star Trek with friends, <laughs> you can get lost in that time and hours can go by and you have no idea of it. It's almost like your perception of time disappears. Who needs uh, the library, right? When you can be talking Star Trek with your friends. But it's that same thing. Oh my God, I've been here. It's, it's 10 o'clock already. I've been here for hours. Right, right. right. The other one, uh, that the other example that just came up, Larry, that I think is hilarious. We didn't even think about that. Scotty's use of the estimated repair times to make others think of him as a miracle worker. This is right on. This is right well, on. Well, you know, then, they, okay, then we did, we were talking about, well, there's probably one in Lower Decks, but now we're into buffer time and Boimler time. and <laughs> Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, um, right, right, we, right. Were, we were a little bit at a loss to think of a Lower Decks example, but yeah, I, there I think there was one, but I would, you know, two in the morning, who wants to keep thinking, but right. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, this is a, this is an, uh, I, I think there's a very pandemic application here, too. So, um for those people who are working remotely and are working from home, um, and, and for those who are uh, managing people and managing teams and coordinators, it, it is really important to be able to communicate yeah. how long is it gonna take you to, to do something. So you, setting expectations is, is really important and coordinating that all on a team that is remote is really important and uh and it can be quite difficult to do that um and um uh scotty uh definitely has mastered um setting expectations uh in a way that maintains his perception as a it's miraculous <laughs> yeah, yeah i just love how he explains that to jordy and jordy's saying mm -hmm. no no <laughs> i don't do that at all and scotty's like it was very, it was, that was such a great case of one of the first times we had the clashing, well, it was literally the clashing of generations, but it was a very clashy of uh, the 60s versus the 80s TV. I mean, it's the kind of thing that Lower Ducks does every 47 seconds. I mean, it's, you know, right, it's right. the meta <laughs> level on top of Star Trek expectation. And that's one of the first times I, I can think of Star Trek poking fun at itself through their, through their um, exchange. Melanie's asking for uh, a little bit of a <clears throat> psychological exp uh, explanation around time dilation stuff. Melanie, I'm going to get to that in the counselor's log. Don't you worry. I'm going to get to it. And um, uh, uh, Libby has a great comment. Scotty adds to time. Rom gets it done faster than even O'Brien thinks it can be done. Um, that, <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. Oh, Libby, you're such a Ferengiist, but okay. I know. Libby will always, the, we can always count on her to represent yeah. the, the Ferengi aspects. Um, there's, there's so many great examples here. Um, Larry, you, you came up with one, um, um, that I didn't think about, um, Star Trek three. Well, I was I picked that out, but actually you kind of mentioned it. You said, "What about the movies?" And again, this is like a perceptual thing. But Spock on his big comeback tour, seeing the evolution of Spock like catch up to speed with everyone else. It's like if you've been in a coma for ten years or five years, or if you've been out of circulation, even on a hopefully maybe not a non medical issue, but if you've been out of whack or you've been gone from a place you used to live and you move back, yeah. Yeah. Right. Or you've been away at school for a year or gone for something and you come home just that year you've been gone. The changes that happen. Oh, the so and so went out. Oh, that's a new thing. Oh, wait. Oh, you're 
you know, just the people and the place and the thing that your your familiarity is skewed by a year or two years. And of course, the longer you're divergent, it's like whenever I go home back to Oklahoma, the first few years, it was amazing. It felt like everything happened while we were gone. And after a while, it's like, well, that's called change, dummy. And it's like it's like when you buy a new car or you get something new, you suddenly see it everywhere, right? Whatever you just were close right. to, you suddenly see right. it. It's almost like a version – and there, I mean, maybe you've got some fancy-smancy psycho term for it. But that the thing of when you've been gone just even for a little while and come back and all – you're heightened – to all the differences that normally you, they would have just been the tapestry of things going by that you wouldn't have noticed, ah. you know, of change. Tapestry. But when the you tapestry got of that, change, yeah, 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 um, uh, yeah, you're you're absolutely right. Um, on, is there some there, fancy term for that? There's uh, a few. Yeah, there's a few different terms actually. Perceptual. That come to mind. Um, yeah, yeah um, I'm I'm blanking on the name, but there's there's an exact name for the thing that when you buy something and then you see it everywhere like oh uh, everyone has a yellow car like yeah no look they're all over the place right yellow um, it's, i'm blanking yes, yes i'm blanking on that but we it's um and by the way uh larry that image i just put up was actually from star trek 4 not star trek 3 uh thank you well what, for... yeah so bring it back to spock the whole we see you know after he's after we get over the whole he, he's dead he's dead already and then by he's the way dead no, jim did you know actually that that was- no? He's living inside my mind. Get that hobgoblin out I, of my head. I was stumbling around through old YouTube's and found the Paul Rosa interview of, of D that creation sold for ages, and it's it's great to go back to original material. But he was it, D was reminding how they wanted him to say something about they thought you're the doctor, you'll say it. He's like, there is no way I'm saying he's dead, Jim, at Spock. He's like, there's no way I'm doing mm-hmm. that. It'll it'll yeah. And so they gave the line to Scotty in the scene to say, because Dee didn't want McCoy to say that as it was going to be too trite and too much. And they didn't yeah. have he didn't say yeah. he's dead, Jim. He says he's dead already or whatever. He's dead already. He's dead already. But my point is, in the comeback from that, through when he's revealed in three, well, we see him with Savick, grow, you know, uh, growing, <laughs> regrowing. But the arc across even about a four and even five and even into six, he's mostly okay and back. He's just really cool as a cucumber in six, like with yeah. Valeris and the whole you know, resurrection. But through four and five, even you're seeing, especially in four, you're seeing him come back. So I pick, you know, that's the beginning, the, the very big. It's the basics, and of course that was the point. He he gets stuck on how do you feel, and that's the whole loop of four. But. Um, but seeing someone come back from being out of sync or out of phase, no matter how big your visual effects budget is, you might have none and still feel out of phase. And and that's yeah. a that's a time perception too of having to catch up, or maybe everybody else's perception of you. Um, Michael, uh, Michael, thank you. Is uh, has a term right there, confirmation bias. So confirmation ah. bias is the the example of um the car thing that you mentioned, and um. Yeah, Larry. I think that this is this is uh, another great. Has nothing to think do about. with the Supreme Court. Okay. No. Um, <laughs> that's a different um, kind of confirmation bias. That's a different. Yeah, that's a different <laughs> kind. Um, I think there's a there's a pandemic parallel here too. At, at least for my life, um, 2020 was the first calendar year that I lived um, back in California. I grew up here, mm. and then and then I went down to Southern California for college. I was in D.C. for grad school, and the first leg of my career, I lived out in New York City. And um, my family, we moved back here to Northern California in the fall of 2019. So 2020 was our first full year back in California, and and especially Northern California, the first time I lived here since the early 2000s. Um, There was a lot that I was looking around Mm -hmm. and seeing this is a very different place um number one was the traffic the traffic complete it became (laughs) it was as bad as la um uh, and and now now of course it's that that's gone because the pandemic and silicon valley everyone's working from home however the thing that really hit me hard with this the same idea of um Mm -hmm. of spock coming back and seeing everything's differently uh the wildfires larry i was woefully unprepared for the changes to the California climate over the last 15 years. 
the way people had learned to manage living in um, in in a California that now now there's uh, we have our we have our four seasons and we have the fifth season now in California, which is the wildfire season. Yeah. Um, it, it hit me really hard. I, I felt like I was grieving for the changes that have happened here. And I also, um, I didn't know, like, look, now I have, um, I've got my, my air filters sitting right here for, for those times. And now I know how to manage this. But um, that was something I, that I, it was not the California I grew up with. Um, and everyone else my, my close friends were saying, oh, yeah, well, you haven't known this, but this has been a slow buildup over the last <laughs> 10 years. This has been happening. Yeah, it's been the frog in the pot um, thing. Yeah, This yeah. is the worst one, but this has been happening. So <laughs> Welcome um, back, Ali. Yeah. yeah, welcome back. <laughs> so th- th- I definitely relate to that, where I had been away and I come back and all the changes stick out to me. So the psychology here is about habituation. Um, we get used to change over time. We get used to little changes that happen around us. Um, right. But if you've been away from those changes and now it's suddenly you're thrown back. Yeah, yeah, it's it's right in your face. You see it. You're like, wait, what happened to that? What happened to that? Oh, uh, everything's changed here. Uh, well, has it? Or have you just been away? So. Right, right. Well, it's that snapshot in time. You know, it's it's when we have a trauma or we have like I was talking about when things were falling to me. But it's like, you know, it's like JFK or Pearl Harbor or 9-11 or the Columbia disaster, or or name something like those those kind of mass snapshots in time that are like etched in our brain. We call know, those, those flashbulb memories. Flashbulb um, memories. It's, okay. It's what, and and um, I might have a little bit more to say about that in the council. Yeah, slide. yeah, but it's I mean it's it's but it's like it's that but different. It's like we have we, that's like our our baseline is a flashline memory, and then we come back to it again. It's the same but different. It's what you were talking about. It's like your memory of yeah. something coming back to it after a long time is, oh, this is, this is different. Um, if I'm there for any length of time, I, that's what happens to me when I get back. And I haven't been back in two years now. So uh, back home, to, back home, home, as we say. I, when we first moved to L.A., we'd, I'd say something about back home. And the kids and sometimes Janet would go, do you mean home in Burbank or do you mean Oklahoma? <laughs> so I start saying, I mean, back home, home. And if I said back home, home, it meant home, home <laughs> means, Oh, I did not call for this. Don't put this on me. Okay. Everybody. Okay. Oh man. There was, um, you sweep, um, you sweep right down the plane whenever you feel like it, Ollie. It's fine with me <laughs> for, um, for the first six months of the pandemic. My daughter and I did, um, we called it Daddy's Dance Class, where I would just play videos of Broadway performances from the Tonys, and um, we would dance along, and um, the Oklahoma (laughs) Revival. (laughs) It was one way I was like, I I just get her to get some energy out, Mm because all of us were just stuck at home all day long, and she wasn't really moving around much. I needed to get her tired so she would actually fall asleep at night. Um, but Oklahoma would, was always a third song um, from the most recent revival, the 2017, 2018 revival. Um, mm-hmm. Anyways, Larry's uninterested. So speaking no, of similar but different. Effort to keep up with. There's a billion ideas in the chat here, and I, and I just want to hope I'm trying to keep up with everybody. And I'm doing this a different protocol this week to try to keep up with the chat and people's is comments. It, um, is it the Type R protocol? <laughs> it's, it's it's not formation L, but it's the type R. <laughs> let's no, uh, speaking of yeah. very similar but different. Let's talk about Star Trek Discovery. Um, specifically, magic <laughs> to make the sanest man go mad. Um, Set times. So, okay. Yeah, I, know, I can't say any any title. I Star almost Trek was Discovery. going to. I was almost going to do like a slice up graphic and pull like every time Lorca or somebody died and like line it up. You know, in the in the times. <laughs> But talk about so, Star Trek going meta, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I this is probably my favorite episode. I'll see your cause of, effect um, and hold my beer and raise you ten. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Every this trope. is probably my favorite episode of um, season one of Star Trek Discovery, and Were, this is the the mud. There... <laughs> <laughs> I I like the pilot actually. Um, I think the first two episodes are 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 really interesting as a as a return to star trek uh, okay. but but um yes 
This Magic is the one me. that felt like an episode, though. This Everything is episodic. Else kind of yeah. Together. yeah, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. The totally. one you can grab onto the way I. Yeah, yeah. It. They eventually got better at. I think by third season they they got there. But yes, this is the one that everybody goes. Oh yeah, if you, you can't remember the damn title, you can at least remember the Harry Mud Time Loop show. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I can't. Re- I can't. I can't remember any of the titles to season one of Star Trek Discovery. Um, after the pot. After the. That's the yeah. Vulcan Hello, and then that's yeah. yeah the Vulcan after Hello. The- Vulcan Hello. Um. Besides that, I can't remember. Any of Battle them. Of binaries, which to me yeah. means it's like there should be four stars because a binary star is two stars. So if you've got binaries, that should be four stars. But I won't go there. And then think... context is for kings. That's a great Oh, I time. knew there was a king. I was going to say the kingeth come till kingdom come or something. But no, that's not. It's Context uh, is for kings. Because I use that. That's a great phrase and right. I use it all the time. Because no, context is for all the poppers. It's all for everybody. Yes. yes. Um, for all the but we, ha- we, we have a thing to say about this episode. Um, besides the fact that we, we really like it. Um, what was the thing we were going to say about this episode, Larry? I, it, was your, it was your point. <laughs> yes, <laughs> No, it was well. Mud. I really it like it, Larry. The fact that Mud has—I mean, it's the good old Star Trek. We're a fixed point in time, like the Borg vortex, the Chronotons vortex in First Contact, right? It's like we're an isolated island. I know what I'm doing, but everybody else is changing or evolving. Is it? Was that it? Harry sure. Mud was the fixed point of reference, and everything else kept changing around him. Yeah. I, I honestly have no memory of what I wanted to say about this episode because I forgot. Uh, okay. But I like the episode a lot. It's and I went and, and it's an image. Fine. I'm going to go through the list of what everybody's throwing in the chat. No, I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> We're trying to be equal opportunity and throw Discovery a bone here. but And there's probably some other discoveries <laughs> if we can stop and think about it. Uh, oh my gosh! Okay, Larry, well, I, I, I'd love to know, talk about this. You know, here's another one. discovery: the fact that yeah. that uh, we still don't know, and maybe it'll be fodder for novels or something. But the I th- in fact, I think it is the year that Michael had alone or with Book and apart from the crew, and and when they had their reunion, oh, it's like sure. yeah, the last year happened, <laughs> and there's yeah. one or two references to it. Yeah. You know. But it's like, okay, well, that was in the grand scheme of things, that one year alone. Yeah, I got smarter and I learned how to survive in this new wild land. Yeah. Other than that, let's move on. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, you're, you're absolutely right. That's, that's a really great point. Um, there's, there's two I want to talk about here. I want to get back to TNG. Uh, I want to talk about all good things, actually. And um, one of the ways in which I want to talk about all good things is... Um, it's so, all, I hate the way it politicized time. Because you were either you were either time or you were anti time, and I just hate to see time being weaponized like that. <laughs> oh, maybe that's not what they meant. Okay, I'm I'm. It's two twenty twenty one here for me. Please, Larry, please proceed, Governor. <laughs> Larry, it's such a paradox. Um, it's such. A it paradox. sure is, and one of us is real. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> well, who's time and who's anti time? We'll we'll let you decide. Um. And Uncle so, uh, Time, he's back there in the corner <laughs> laughing at the whole thing. But please go ahead. Uh, uh, not to be confused with Father Time. Um, yes. Who's it's the also... whole Time family. Okay. <laughs> on Paramount Plus this fall. On, um, on Paramount Mountain. Okay. A mountain of time at Paramount Plus. Um, <laughs> okay, I had a point to say about all good things. All good things. And I. I I had it, um, they all must come to an end. Um, Like, yes, folks, this episode will too one day. Um, But not before Larry and I are fully done beating it with the beating. All in good time, my dear. All in good time. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. We are, we are, we are stuck in our own time loop here. Um, So I I, I need to fire some gravitons. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I hadn't thought about this before, Larry, but... What I like about all good one one way to think about all good things. There's a lot of reasons why I like it, but one one new way of of thinking about it is this idea that um, that the past, present, and the future are all alive at the same time um, for Picard in all good things, and much like that, Larry, the history is alive with us right now, 
you know, the one of the things that 2020 revealed in, in the United States is um, uh, this this much larger conversation around race and about mm-hmm. how race has been a part of uh, of many different um, systems in the United right. States. Um, the criminal justice system. One might um, even call it systemic racism. Systemic. Right. Right. And. Um, uh, I've been reading a lot more about Afrofuturism and um, a lot of um, um, uh, like Octavia um, Octavia Butler. Am I? Mm-hmm. Am I? Yes. Um, I've been reading a lot more of her work and this idea that the history is alive with us right now and new futures are also possible. And I, I think it's a very beautiful. Um, um, it's a beautiful idea that. Uh, that all good things really shows us that the actions that we have taken and the actions of our ancestors, it's still living out with us right now. And so that's a, uh, that's a new perception of time that I gained through 2020, it's, this idea that yeah. history is alive with us right now. Yeah, um, yeah. It's very Butlerian. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it gets back to your favorite quote from Star Trek Discovery Season yeah. 4. Um, yeah. Or, or even three. I'm not. I'm not revealing anything from. Season. Oh, season three. Right. Right. Because I don't know. I, See, it, I, I, it I time if, dilated to the future. It was as if it was four seasons. No, time is the fire in which. Oh wait, that's the other one. No, the past is the light with which we illuminate the future. Yeah. So yeah. yes, for all the people that say, "Oh, t- history is old and boring and dusty, and who cares." And or well, so bad things happen. Let's move on. Let's get positive. It's like no, you can't get positive. You get forgetful. You get stupid if you ignore the past. And I, the way they el- the they eloquated that. That's a new one. The way they uh, the way they <laughs> conceptualized that was that uh, the past is the light by which we illuminate the future. It's nothing to be ignored or or boxed up and stuck on a shelf somewhere. So, so anyway. let's actually, Larry, let's dive into one of our favorite quotes that we make fun of yeah. so often from Star Trek Generations. Time is the you know fire you can't live which it. we burn. Time or, is the fire in which we burn. Yes. Or, you know, uh, some of us like to think of time as a companion that comes along with us in journey <laughs> and reminds us that this moment will never come again. Yes, and some of us didn't I say something? Is this has popped up to me? I think somewhere in this last year, I said on the air here, out of the blue, time is the time, time is the mud in which we waddle, or something like that. <laughs> time is the muck in which we like kind of swim through. One of those tired metaphors about feeling like you're all bogged down. Like, oh, if only I could just burn up and be done with it. No, I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm stuck in the densest jello ever here. Yeah. So anyway, anyway, we're, ta- yeah. we're talking about perception of time. These are mm-hmm. two characters that perceive time very differently. In in, in um, in well, the one's perception, been, one's been traumatized in 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 living in weird time loops. I mean, you know, well, and the other is is uh, is not the bad guy of the movie. <laughs> you know, they both. They both have have uh, been. I, well, I meant uh, I meant the bad guy. Of the movie was the one who was he'd I been know, touched Larry, by I the. Was, I was oh. making a little. I was making. Oh, a, a little joke, sir. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was I yeah. was close enough little. to not spell it. Okay. Little. Um, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> that was one tough joke, Larry. Um, <laughs> walk, <laughs> walk. So. <laughs> What it's I wanted okay. to say about this... Um, it was good enough to get you in this episode, so it's fine. <laughs> I got to use Flash Larry for you. Uh, I'll be here next week, too. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Well, then have the veal. Tip your waiters. Okay. And I was here last week. It's it's yeah. all it's all one, okay. one time. I'm, I'm losing um, it. Yes. Yeah. Time. Time for you to make this point. My point is um, we've been talking about perception of time as... Um, how we experience it, how we perceive it, but our beliefs about time are really important as well. Um, our belief about what what the passage of time means, and um, I remember when I was um, I was eleven years old or something. I was getting braces. No, I was older than that. Maybe 12, 13. I don't know. I was getting my braces. I I sucked my thumb until I was like six years old. I had a very bad overbite. 
and we were finally gonna do something about it. I was gonna get braces. So I had to have a tooth removed to be able to make room for my overbite to come back. It was, it was not pretty. Anyways, I went to this dentist to have these uh, teeth removed, which really all they pretty much do is just pull them out. You think there's something more, um, it's, it's medieval medievalism, Larry. Uh, we're dealing with medievalism here. Um, anyways, um, like cat, cat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for folks that don't know, I'm, I'm on the taller side and, um, uh, my dentist asked me, how, how old are you kid? are you, uh, are you 15, 16? I'm like, no, I'm, you know, 13, 14. I wish I was that old. And he kind of stopped everything. And he said, never wish you are older than you are. Like, um, really mm -hmm. savor the time that you have right now. My father just died. And I, I bet he wishes that he had a bit more time than, than he did. And I was, you know, as a little kid, I'm like, this got real serious real fast. I'm just, <laughs> can you just dig out my teeth? I'm already terrified oh, of this. Yeah, 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 yeah. As my mouth is all open, right? Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. But the moment stuck out for me. It, it's, 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 it's a weird moment to come back to where I was so, for me, mm. time was like an obstacle because I needed to become 16 so I can drive. You right. know, I, I wanted to be 18 so I'm an adult and independent. And time was this barrier that I needed to, to work through. And for him, time was this like uh, this ticking clock that um, he needs, he, he wants time to slow down. He wants to savor the time he has more. So um, it just got me thinking of, um, in a similar way as Star Trek Generations, um, our, how we, our beliefs about time change. Mm -hmm. Given circumstances, oh, given well, culture, right. yeah. given age, all of age. those sort of things. Right, right, yeah. right. Well, I know yeah. you're. It's a lot less traumatizing. <laughs> but my third grade teacher, Mrs. Bergner, I can remember one kid in class used to always say, "I wish it was Christmas. I wish it was my birthday. I wish it was Halloween. I wish it was Christmas." <laughs> and she'd say, and she would always say, "You're wishing your life away," and which I was like, "Okay," but anyway, but it's that same concept without the. My dad just died, but right. Uh, Scott's high school principal said the same thing. Uh, my high school principal had a similar saying. Whenever a, I'd say things a like that, it was Friday, thing. yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, he'd say, you're wishing your life away. Uh, Her I name also was really... Berta Lou Bergner, so that should tell you about generations right there. <laughs> um, Melanie says, uh, 23rd century, century dentistry. Bad tooth? Don't pull it out. Beam it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? There's beam it out, and then like no, there's just be blood tingle. gushing after yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, like that would be what. And you, even, even you even beam in the deadener, you know. You even uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, um, but yeah, generations actually. I, I've never. I've. I always made fun of that. Um, those two quotations, Larry. But I think there's actually something to be said about that. Um, mm -hmm. um, and and I and how we. So uh, this is a little bit of, a, I'm going to give you a sneak peek at the counselor's log here, but culture has a big impact on how we perceive time. Right. Um, even, um, even uh, again, I was mentioning I lived in New York. Perception of time in New York is very different than perception of time in California. Um, the whole idea of a New York minute and how fast everyone is moving and the idea of how much can get done in a minute in New York. Whoa, um, whoa, dude, dude, just whoa, slow down, man. Take it easy on this. Hold on. Take wait. Run that by point. me again. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Case in point. Larry drives me crazy. Even now, um, even in pandemic times, I'm I'm a I try to schedule everything in advance in terms of what limited social things I even have. Um, and all my Californian people, uh, minus you, you're actually quite good at this, but all my Californian friends are like, yeah, we'll play it by ear. We'll kind of see when the day comes. And I'm like, no, New Yorkers have their schedules booked out months in advance. Come on, let's, let's get on top of this. But part of it is <clears throat> it's cultural and part of it is environment, 
environment based. Mm -hmm. um, you have to do all of that because there's just so many people in New York. It's hard to get a reservation. <laughs> there's there's so many things you have to kind of navigate to even be able to interact with each other in person in New York. And that's whereas not in L. A. You just you, you just you just learn to know the guy that knows a guy that knows a guy. <laughs> Don't worry. Everyone we, knows. We, yeah. Everyone knows a guy. <clears throat> Um, versus the culture that I grew up in back home where everything moves a little slower because everybody's talking a little slower. <laughs> but the biggest thing is you don't have to worry because everything is where there's always lots of parking. They just pave a parking lot. So who needs to worry about, <laughs> you know, if there's a traffic jam, it's because they just need to add a third lane somewhere. I mean, you know, anyway. <laughs> uh, but yes, it is cultural. It can be cultural. Your, your yeah. perception, you know. Yeah, and and part of it is the <clears throat> beliefs of the culture. Part of it is the environment that you're in. Um, oh, people have heard about island I, I don't know how I was today. This I, I was a couple of years ago. Well, in my adult years, maybe ten years ago, it dawned on me that the reason people talk slower in the South is because it's so effing hot and humid. So no one <laughs> wants to move faster than air conditioning yeah, yeah, could have sped yeah. up. I don't think Coke could have been invented in Atlanta if it hadn't been for the early days of, or grown. If it hadn't been for air conditioning being invented. Thank you, George Westinghouse. But, you know, um, that, that was like a cultural, a, a, a geographical effect of culture. And around the world, in hot climes, cold climes, obviously, la-da-da, on down the line. But, yeah. and that, and Absolutely. that if you have to take 15 minutes every time you go anywhere to put 15 skins on because it's so cold outside, that's going to affect how, yeah, yeah, all of that. Yeah, yeah. all of this stuff um, impacts our cultural beliefs about time and uh, impacts... Uh, Often unexamined, know. I would think, probably. Yes, yeah, 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 because yeah, totally. Like, what's the way things if, are? Well, until you have it, a culture clash, right. And which, yeah, which is usually when you're out of, you're you're out of sync with your cultural beliefs of time when you're in a different place. Yeah, yeah, totally. Along with everything um, else. Right. Larry, um, uh, any other big episodes you want to... There's a few more we have here uh, before and after from Voyager. Would you like to talk about this one? Well, again, some of these... Some time shows are like, ooh, time in a weird... You know, time in a wad is weird. We could exploit that for a story. I'm trying to think. I just I was trying to think of a Voyager episode. Of course, there's one big Voyager, and a lot of people have said it already. Um, uh, not to be. <laughs> I remember when I heard that they were doing an episode called uh, uh, "Blink of an Eye," and I'm like, "No, wait! It's oh wait, oh really, guys? Wink of an eye and blink of an eye? Because they didn't. They really didn't. I mean, we've got emissary and the emissary, but okay. Um, but no, blink of an eye is the great one with the the uh, the planet that's. Um, as well as <laughs> so <laughs> somebody, uh, had, somebody had the uh, uh, maybe it was Cairo had the uh, had the what's her name title for it the weird planet where everything moved at different times or whatever but anyway but that's a that was a case in point I've got you the image there of the the yeah you know what's funny Larry there. do you know what you you know what you call this image what it must have been a typo you called it blunk of an eye <laughs> must have been a typo. That was, yeah, that was it my must have been a, a typo <laughs> now. Um, <laughs> no, but I mean, it was. This is the thing. It was obviously a cultural, and it was a time show. But it was like, again, here's Voyager as the fixed reference. But it wasn't just that it was a fixed reference while time was changing. It was time was changing? So, you know, the Doctor is gone thirty seconds, and three years go by, or whatever that was. And it was fat, and and it was very cool there from the standpoint of just the matte painting. I didn't even go with characters. Just the matte painting shows. Here's this hillside overlooking this creek bed, which was prime, you know, civilizing land. And you've got that primitives shot. And then you've got the high tech modern city that has a spacefaring culture, the beginning of one. So, yeah, it was it was a very, it was a good old Star Trek thought provoking, you know, example of of um, uh, taking a concept and running with it. And, and it was a yeah. great shot. And a lot of people love that episode. I love I, I love that episode, and it, it gets back at that uh, idea of how um, how relative time is, and I, I don't just mean in the Einsteinian sense, although it very much is in that or sense. Family how, of time sense, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, um, 
exactly what we were talking about before. Time can be experienced um, in in very different ways, and there are there are some people for whom um, they experience twenty twenty very differently, and we're uh, mm -hmm. still able to do many things. Like there there there's a few countries. Uh, yes. Taiwan comes to mind that largely remained open because of the way in which they were able to implement contract tracing and isolation. And uh, they kept the virus largely from closing down the country. Their experience of 2020 is very different um, than uh, than yours or mine, Larry. Um, mm -hmm. There's there's two that I I want to talk about before we move on. Um, the first one is the visitor. Um, one of yes. BS9's oh, that real one. greats. <laughs> So someone mentioned earlier no, about the profits. Okay, we're talking only about time shows that have a profound interpersonal effect on the person. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I don't know why we're talking about The Visitor then. No, but this is um, this is one of Deep Space Nine's uh, greatest episodes and the one that always will make me just cry now. Gosh, this episode gets you right. Gets you, gets you right here. Um, uh, um, when did... When did Sulu find time to have a family? If something's important, you make the dime. <laughs> oh gosh! Um, back to Deep Space Nine, Larry. Yeah, I was wondering how your time jumped right over into generation. I don't know. I don't know how I did. I don't know how I did. Um, time is not linear. Um, so um, what I was going to say about the visitor is um, old Jake, uh, young Jake. Old Jake and young Jake, yeah. yeah. Um, our Bell perception of, of of time is is so different depending on on how we age. And um, when I was doing the uh, the PBS um, series Self Evident, the last episode that we did was about um, uh, people in their eighties, and I interviewed a psychologist mm -hmm. in her eighties, and um, she was telling me about. Um, how she lives her life really 18 months into the future and she doesn't really plan much beyond that and um because she's not working full time she said i, I don't know if this made it to the final cut of the episode but it was in our <coughs> interview she said ooh, I, ooh. I have i have the gift of time you know one of the um I, i'm not always planning ahead so i i, I can live in the moment more and one of my favorite parts of the day is a good cup of tea. Um, I just enjoy that experience so much, and I I can live in it. I can be in it. And the visitor, I, I think, she kind of shows she's us. She's Baku ready. She sounds like. She's what? I said she's Baku ready. It sounds like. She's Baku ready. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And yeah, she's, um, there's actually a trans. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, her name was Anish. Um, no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but I think the visitor really condenses that. Is we have young Jake. Mm -hmm. for whom you know he's you see how he lives his world and then um struggling with the loss of his father and then we have jake sort of um he he talks about his career and writing of all all of his books and then um seeing how time is also running out for him um how that uh, how that kind of changes things but then you also have you have um Benjamin Sisko, who is stuck in this one moment in time, you know, it's it's a beautiful yeah. story about family and about <clears throat> father and son, and um, but it's also a, a really interesting story that truncates how we see time differently across the right. lifespan. Well, and in that story, rather than uh, you know the ship in a time capsule vortex or or uh, who, uh, or the Voyager ship, whoever, instead of the hero, our perspective as an audience, our point of view is the point of view of the person fixed in time. In that case, the person fixed in time is the oddball, and we're seeing the point of view of yes. the person advancing. We're, yes. we're with them for the story, and that's where the, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, there's that beautiful moment where uh, Benjamin Sisko is back, and he just doesn't want to wake up Jake. You know, and he's just looking at him, even though he knows that his time is so limited. Um, and I mean, God, that that's just uh, such a beautiful moment. Um, yeah, I was um, really. Cairo, Cairo has a great uh, quote here. 
Um, a theoretical uh, physics professor I had at university used to say, we all know that time is relative. An hour with a person we love is much shorter than an hour in a university exam. <laughs> we don't uh, we don't need <laughs> Einstein to know that. Um, uh, that's 100 percent right mm -hmm. there, Cairo. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that one. And related to that, Larry, uh, we have a Star Trek Picard. Look at that. I think we've covered all series here with this. We have a Star Trek Picard example. We and, mentioned, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, and this, this was, one this you was were your like idea, skeptical. Larry. You were skeptical yeah, on this, and I said, I "Well, was. it's a thing. It's like it's." But to me, it was like, "Oh, come on! There's got to be some fancy psychological term for this too." It's the thing we all <laughs> do when we have. Well, sometimes it happens with our own our own kids, our own offspring. But even if you have uh, you have nieces and nephews, or your best friends that you see that you're great friends with somebody, and then you have that time gap with them. And they had kids. Uh, or even just younger, your own siblings. Anyway, it's that, that time gap when you see a young person and then they've grown, especially when they become an adult. You know, it's the, oh, oh my God, look at you, or how, you know, how big you've become. And Picard has that moment with Elnor. When he's, yeah. you know, he's, he, and, it's, and, and then it's factored in through his guilt window. Yeah, 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 I promise to, to, to take you away and do something with you and whatever. Or, or I promise to get you out of this weird female warrior nun convent here. Uh, this kid, and he didn't, and he never does. So on top of all the guilt he's carrying around for the weight of the local space of the galaxy, he's got this individual kid. And that moment when they reunite, and he knows intellectually he's way older. He knows how much time has passed. But to see, you know, the living embodiment walk in the door, it's got, it's like it's like when you go back to reunion and you haven't been in ten or twenty years, or or anything, you know. Or you see some part of your family you haven't seen in ages. Yeah. Or you just when you get that gra you get the graduation announcement or the wedding announcement, and you go, "Holy crap! Are they eighteen? Are they twenty two? You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't even have yeah. to see them to have the intellectual shock. No, I, I think we've all experienced so, that, and and um, we've all we've all been on one side of that, right? Um, or many of oh. us have been on both sides of that. Um, right. Much bigger. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, you know, um, more recently, people who haven't seen me in a long time say that about all my gray hairs. They're like, when did you go gray? And I'm like, 10 years ago. Where have you been? <laughs> um, <Right>. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. But um, but I've, I've, uh, I, that happens with my daughter all the time is someone who hasn't seen in, – in a matter of months, you know, she will grow – and, and not only grow in physically, but grow in her abilities. <laughs> right. And so the words she says, the things she likes to play, the things she's interested in. Um, when you're a parent or you're close to the people who are growing and changing, right. you see the day-to-day -day change and you, you get so used to it. You don't even notice well, it. It's, too small um, it's again, too yeah, it's too small. It's, it's, you, you habituate to those changes. But to someone who hasn't been around for the day-to-day -day changes... It is, it is, you know, quite striking. Um, and we see that when Picard sees uh, Eleanor. He's like, don't you belong in Lord of the Rings? I mean, wow, you've really grown up. He's, he's really <laughs> taken aback by the, by the whole thing. Um, I don't know. Have uh, we Larry, I think yeah. we've covered the entire <clears throat> canon. I think, oh, no, 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 no. We have not. One remains, but it remains no and there, more. And then there was one. What? Star Trek Enterprise. Um, oh, that's in, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I threw this at you. This I didn't mention this when we were thinking. On later no. on, I realized it may no, be that I, maybe somebody else has one. But I was thinking that's got. Is that like the primary time time event of Enterprise? They were so well aside from like quantum universe thing. No, I mean yes, and it's an. Oh boy. Quantum leap. Um, yeah, Scott said no time episodes, but oh, but this one's so good. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Okay, so here's I'll the do thing. the show. I got to be the first captain. Yes, and I don't want to leap into any uh, other person's body. Um, but so here we've got a we got a science medical MacGuffin. He's got a memory. This is Twilight. This is for the folks that are trying to pin this. This is out. Twilight without vampires. This is Enterprise. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and back uh, Scott uh, Archer has a memory retrovirus. So basically, every day, and it's and, and it's a science fiction way of, of what happens, and it's been exploited and probably abused as a concept. In other, you know, what is it? Um, 
What's the Drew Barrymore movie where she wakes up every day and has no memory of the... Uh, 31st Dates or something like that? Yeah, yeah. But you're carrying around your own Groundhog Day, and you can't control it. You're the one who's out. It's a reverse Groundhog Day. And in this case, it's Archer. Archer wakes up every day. He's physiologically aging, but he wakes up every day with no memory of the past. And he's happy. He's totally happy to hear what's going on. And, and, And to Paul has left Starfleet and Vulcan service, and she's basically caretaking him. And then, of course, in the course of this episode, they break it and, you know, what all. But no, it's that it's the point of uh, everything is new every day. And you have it's like you have no sense of time and time is affecting memory because you have no time to accumulate memories. And we don't have the time. Um, Yeah, uh, this is a great episode. Um, uh, Phil just said that um, uh, I think Phil. Yeah, Phil said this is his favorite Enterprise episode. This is a really great episode. And um, it's time uh, to talk. There, there are some real world um, similarities here, um, where people who often because of um, viruses uh, or some type of injury might might lose the ability to form new memories, and so they can become stuck in time. If you want to see a good example of what this is like, um, look up Clive Waring on YouTube. Um, this is a, a pianist who, um, because of a virus, uh, lost the ability to form new memories. And um, mm. the only thing he could really... He, he lived in these moments, these constant moments. And um, there's a documentary that's been made about him. It, it's, it's quite good. Um, the one thing that he could do for a prolonged period of time was play piano. Um, that, was, that was kind of it. And um, the one the one thing that really shined through in his his memories is his love of his wife. Um, so check out that uh, Clive Waring. Just if you look him up on YouTube, you'll uh, you'll see the documentary about him. But um, yeah, this can this can definitely happen to folks who have lost the ability to form new memories, who have experienced mm. that that mm. form of um, amnesia, uh, that retrograde form of amnesia. Yeah. Um, well, no, there's um, an- interrograde interrograde. Form of right. so. And we, as with the exception of a couple here, we kind of stayed away from. I mean, there's so many episodes, and again, I've been creeping through the chat, but I've um, Scott and Nathaniel both did the two bookend shows for me. Mentioned, you know, Inner Light, obviously for Picard, and Hard Time for O'Brien, where they live an entire lifetime and then snap back to in, in their head, and then they snap back to real time and realize they've they've had 40, 50, 60 years of, a, of another life. But not really. But it's it, they're carrying it around in their cranium, but not in their physical body. So, you know, just the effect. What's the difference? And one of them is living a, a life as a citizen on a dying world, and one of them's in prison for all that time. So, uh, carrying out the sentence that was, you know, the way of, of the way one. Um, Victoria mentions sound of her voice, where you're in a time dilation, where right. you're talking to somebody from the past. Which you and you don't know. It's the reveal is they've been dead for years, and then everyone's in shock. People had this time. To, people had the time to have have emotional attachments with someone they thought they were rescuing, who turned out not to be there at all. But they still knew them as a person and were able to give them a memorial. Um, Which, uh, Larry, that can happen. Um, I mean, this is um, not a perfect analogy, but when we read books from people of, from different eras. Um, mm-hmm. we're kind of forming a relationship and a conversation with this person who no longer exists. Um, so that's a little bit like the sound of her voice. Um, you can read the diary yeah. of someone. You can read, you know, their their memoir, and um, it's almost like we are having a con. Like this yeah. person from long ago, their 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 voice is now active in her head. Yeah, uh, Christoph mentioned visionary on on DS Nine, which were like short time jumps. And short-term uh, perceptions of you know new new looks at looking at at things. Uh, I, I like Rob McLean here mentioned. He said uh, he was talking just in life in general. How Ar- we were talking about time zones at one point, and he said Arizona never changes to, for daylight savings time. They just observe everybody else from past and future. <laughs> Never thought about Arizona being the time hub of the galaxy. But, uh, <laughs> um, Anyway, guys, sorry, I'm so far behind on chats as usual. My si- my new system broke down because I, I don't know, I'm, it's like I'm co-hosting the show or something. But I still, we still have the best chat thread in the in the galaxy here, guys. I just that is true. That is true. 
Um, should we open up the counselor's log? Oh, right? let's get there. Let's get there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get to the counselor's log. So, um, oh, you have been dribbling little bits of the counselor's log. Little all. bits, little bits, uh, yeah. little bits here and there, just like your mini K Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that I think is really interesting about time, uh, we talked about how time is a function of culture, time is a function of place, and all of that. But time, time and memory, um are very much connected and our perception of time can can be highly influenced by um, how many new memories we have to form so Larry if you think back to your childhood it, it might mm -hmm. you might remember these these like endless <laughs> summers or how oh, long right. it took like the day like right right and perception of time was quite different then um, but you might also remember back when we used to do things like travel and be in a new place and time might feel different there, especially if you're on vacation. And um, like if you ask me about um, my wife and I for our honeymoon, we went to Paris and I can, I can describe to you all the places we went day by day. Um, like, we, well, we landed here and then we first went here and then we did that and then we saw this and that and that. Like, how can I tell you about all of those things, but I cannot, do, I can't, I, I can barely tell you what I did yesterday. Mm -hmm. Like, why is that? Too. Yeah. So, yes, when we are forming, when we have to form a lot of new memories, our perception of time changes. Um, and this is what happens throughout childhood. We're often well, learning. I'll, when you drive, especially when you're driving on a vacation, you've got a long road trip. Even if it's eight or ten or twelve hours, they take longer, and you remember. And going home, it never matters how far away you are from home. The trip home is always one fourth as long <laughs> as the trip going out. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, this is where, depending on how much information we're taking in, time can stretch out or it can contract. So um, mm -hmm. it it can feel like like 2020 was all the same because largely we weren't doing different things. We weren't going to new places. There wasn't anything new or unexpected happening during the day. Nothing Many of broke us up. The, yeah. Nothing broke nothing, up your time. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So when you, when you look back at 2020, it is, it, it can feel like it's been forever, but also not that long because um, we haven't really done much that's different. There's no novelty, no newness. Um, there wasn't much new stuff our mind was really taking in. And um, this is very different from the times where we are doing something brand new. Like uh, when you start a new job, um, there's a lot to learn. And the, the, your memory and your sense of time is different for the first day on the job than it is for day 100. Um, and, and so this is one of the reasons why um, as, we're, as we're older, time seems to really speed up because we're not really doing much that's different. But when we're kids, time can feel very slow because every year we're doing new things, we're learning new things, we're in new places. Um, so this is one of the reasons why 2020 has been very loopy for our sense of time. Um, the days have felt very similar. There haven't been new experiences. Um, and this is also one of the reasons why so, uh, there's something called the reminiscence bump, Larry. So hmm. our memories um, for our adolescence and our early adult years are, are prioritized a bit differently by our mind than other eras. <clears throat> and those are the times where um, there's a lot of new stuff happening. Mm -hmm. A lot of different experimentation is happening. And um, the older we get, these memories are the ones that stick out the most is our, our late adolescence right. and early adult years. Well, I, I remember, you know, when you're a kid and you grow up and you, get, you become more adult and you just experience more life. And I remember even by my teens and late teens already remembering the agony, but also wishing you could be that innocent again, remembering how long it felt until Christmas came around again or your right, birthday, something, right. you know, something big, the start of baseball or football season, whatever it was. 
and how as the years went by that got shorter and shorter and it, you, you know it's like you if you want to be depressed and just think that's a factor of aging well it is but one day i realized just mathematically when you're 4 years old the time to next christmas is one fourth of your life yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right? The more it's, it's not it is yeah, it's the longer you live, it's shorter, but it's a mathematical it's a it's a thing that works on even before we talk about time dilation, when you're ten, the time the next Christmas is only a tenth of your life. And when you're yes. twenty, it's only a twentieth of your you know, a year yes. a year becomes a smaller and smaller a single year becomes a smaller and smaller percentage of your lived experience. So of course it exactly. goes from being a huge thing down to to where they're yeah. rolling rolling uh, around. Right. When um, um, that's that episode of Self Evident again, where I um, spoke to people in their eighties, um, that psychologist that was what some one of the things she mentioned as well is she said, you know, I have lived a long life and I have I know that this too will pass, um, and she can say that because she has lived a long life, she has seen the ups and downs, but COVID nineteen is one very 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 small chapter of her life. Her mm -hmm. life is so much more than COVID-19. And this is something I've been telling parents throughout this pandemic. Yeah. Is, yeah, yeah, your children, young children, this is more disruptive to their life in so many ways. Even if you just look at the percentage of their life, this is a bigger chunk of their life than it is for you and me. Mm -hmm. And so that is absolutely true. And the other thing here too, Larry, is um, <clears throat> when we're stressed, when we're anxious, when we're fearful... Um, we actually do take in more information about our immediate environment, and that completely changes our sense of time. Again, time will slow down or speed up always, depending on how much information we're taking in, how much newness there is. And when you're stressed or fearful, um, moments of time can feel stretched out. Um, because there's so much we're alerted to. So this is also why 2020 has kind of warped things is we've all been walking around sort of hyper vigilant and stressed and anxious, but the days have been very much the same. You know, um, I think someone mentioned this in our comments. We haven't and, and had you, the big milestones. I was going to say, then overlay that with the sense of the, the, the people who are seem to be running the world keep you on a... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You on a 24/7 stress level, you know, yes, on top yes. of the pandemic stress. Especially depending or, on the news you might be watching. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. might be making it worse. And, um, and the um, existential things out there like climate change and fire season and much less the pandemic itself and and the pandemic affecting you. I mean, yeah, the pandemic is know, climate change on steroids on top of what's the human reaction to it. So, yes. Yeah, my um <laughs> one of my close friends um <clears throat> had his birthday a couple of days ago when I asked him, hey, were you doing anything for your birthday? And he said, what am I going to do? All we have is work. That's all we have left now is I just work, I watch a little TV, and I go to sleep. There's nothing I can do. And, you know, that I mean, it's quite depressing. Um, we sent him, all of us friends, we, we sent him a video. We all put yeah. videos together and we sent him. So he had a he had a good evening. That was early in the day. He, he doesn't he doesn't have some day. kind of Zoom quilting league he can be part of. <laughs> he ended up having a good birthday. We surprised him. Okay. But um <clears throat> you know the uh, the pandemic has robbed us of holidays, of get-togethers, of uh of ceremonies birthday celebrations, and rituals. Yeah. ceremonies, rituals, movies. You know, how many of us uh, really look forward to the new thing that was coming out, the new summer blockbuster. And this is the other thing about time as well, is um, when you have something to look forward to, it really helps you cope with the passage of time, to be stuck in a situation. Mm -hmm. So not only do we not have the experiences that change our sense of time and give us these milestones, we also don't have the opportunity to look forward to them and we don't have the benefits of looking back on them as well. So this, it's all been very, very, very funky, Larry. Um, and if anyone's interested in learning more about this, um, a journalist at the uh, Star Tribune interviewed me about this. So if you look up Star Tribune, Alima too, we have a whole uh, interview about why the pandemic has changed our sense of time. So And the Star Tribune is Minneapolis? I think yes, I believe so. Okay, I was gonna say, wait, do you mean a Bay Area paper, or do you mean? Oh no, like no. there's a national paper. I was trying to 
think in my head what it was. Yeah. Yeah, I you think she was in... off like it was down the block, and I'm like, no, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> I was looking at the URL and I couldn't remember what city. Um, but you're I think welcome. You're right. From the yeah. longtime professional, I really was a professional <laughs> journalist. I knew them. You... Yeah. Yes. I knew um, a lot of newspaper names. I didn't know anybody there, or work there, or anything. But yeah. No, it's, I'm I'm quite impressed. Um, pull that out of my pull that out of my back pocket. Speaking um, of pulling things out of your back pocket, Larry, let's let's jump into the K three factor. Oh, the K three! Um, I have a very special K three for you this this week, Ali. Well, we and, definitely uh, have the time for it. Okay, I hope so. Because <laughs> no, I just want to talk, start off with a very simple uh, a very simple fact here. Okay, I'm going to take everybody mind I'm going to mind travel everybody back time travel back to the 1960s and a little show called Star Trek came out right. That was futuristic and science fiction-y. Can you put the... That's the one... That's the show with the Jedi. No, it's the show with the guy with the ears. Cylons? It's the show with the Cylons. No, no, no that's DS9. Oh, wait. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Those are the It's founders. the show that's uh, the last <laughs> best hope for peace. Um, yeah. Okay, the first image is now up. Okay, so we've got the... And you have to guide me through this. What? <laughs> really? <laughs> We're having a time dilation to last night when I was calling Larry. Um, that's funny. No, so we've got the 60s props up here. And guys, yes. when, when Star Trek debuted in 1966, one of the cool things from day one, people love the characters, people love the stories, people love the metaphysical parallelism and, and the aspirational and, the, and metaphors and all that, but people also geeked out on the geekery, the tech, and it was so futuristic. And oh my and, God, they're talking... They don't need to have to calm walkie-talkies. They're talking these little cigar shit. They love it. It was the cigar-shaped package. And the tricorder. And if people can't and... see, we're looking at original series tricorder, original series phaser, and original series communicator. In fact, a hundred years later, Dax, in her current form at the time, would talk about, oh, the sleek black and silver accents and go on and on about <laughs> yeah. that. That was a well, okay. So she's in the twenty three, uh, she's in the twenty four seventies then. But in the nineteen sixties here on Earth, people thought that was pretty slickola. Okay, now take that one away and put the next one up, if you would. Tell me when okay. you brought it up. Tell me when you brought the next image back. Next image is up. Okay, so guys, let's flash deja vu. Forward. Let's flash forward to the nineteen, uh, the nineteen, the the nineteen nineties. And yes, I'm playing with you. How did those look in the 1990s? Old, washed up, not near as cool as all the next generation DS9 Voyager yes. era stuff. Oh, it's so dated. Oh, they're cute and we're sentimental about them, but they, they you know, oh, come on, we've got cell phones now. Yes, it inspired the cell phone the communicator did. And we've got tablets and we've got, you know, we, who needs pads? We have to. They looked very dated. Okay, let's flash forward to. Can you take that one away? All right. It was okay. the same image, Larry. Oh, um, the next one is that by, say, oh, I don't know, 2006, when people were paranoid about losing Star Trek. By that time, we had fan films mocking. Yes, I know. I was part of one. We had fan films that were mocking, <laughs> were, were, that were celebrating the original series. And the term, the buzzword out there was it's retro cool. Oh, it's so retro cool to the point that. When he got given the keys to do something with Star Trek to bring everything back, J.J. Abrams and the corporate think tank said, well, let's go back to the basics. We don't know what – Star Trek has lost its way, which was a misnomer. But in the corporate world of Hollywood, the idea was let's go back to the basics and we'll start over you know, with square one and have it be exactly the same except different. Alternate universe. My point being here that the exact same thing – are you are you with me here, Ali? Was seen as completely different at different times, and I have I didn't think about it this way, but over the years since we've had the pundit era here, since we've had video to talk about this in podcasts, the last 10, 12, 15 years, I've kind of come talk tried to talk to younger fans coming along and even oldsters about this pendulum effect. You know, I laugh and I say every new Star Trek, the the creative solution to it the creative challenge has been to make everything exactly the same but totally different <laughs> and and the pendulum swings of of just creativity and internally and external culture affect that 
to the point where that's a case example. Uh, I've got another. I actually do have another image there of our dear Grace Lee yes. Whitney. Put that one up. Uh, so it is up. So you pop that up in 1960. No, you pop that up today, or you pop it up in the 1990s, and people are thinking, "Oh my God! Oh God! Oh God! Mini skirt. We love Grace Lee Whitney, but come on, mini skirts. That's so impractical. You're going to wear that on an away mission. On excuse me, on a landing party duty." Really, guys? Really? Oh, it's so sexist. It's even misogynistic. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Now, take that one away and t put up the yeah. next image. All right, Larry, it's uh, it's the same image. That's because in 1965, 66, I should say, what she's wearing was a radical. It was an F.U. statement, as much of a feminist statement as bra burning was, mini skirts were a huge statement against, hey, old, old, old men, hey, you men running the fashion industry, you can't tell me and dictate to me what morality is, and you can't dictate to me what I'm going to wear. And the miniskirt was a huge rebellion. This seems so counterintuitive now. It was a huge rebellion by the early day women's libbers, feminists. It was like, ha-ha, I can wear my damn skirt as short as I damn well want to, and you can't do a thing about it. And, you know, women, it, the whole thing was, you know, school, you know, school codes and dress codes, and it's got to be no more than two inches above the knee or below the thigh and all that stuff came out of this era. That was never a thing before then. So, again, my point is two different eras see the same image. Uh, time sees the exact same thing in completely different ways. And just because we live in the time now, people get a little sanctimonious. We, we, we see this, and not that we – what is it? The, the arc, uh, Martin Luther King said the arc of history bends toward justice. Heaven forbid there had been unjust and wrongheaded thinking and ways and actions and hurtful damage done in the past. But there's an awful lot of history that as we try to make things better and more correct and more and on a better path, a healthier path for all, more inclusive, more just – there's times when just looking back at the past, we're getting into this now with people wanting to take down statues of Lincoln or statues of Washington and Jeff. Just realizing that the way we look at the past through today, I just want to say, fine, but let 20 more years go by. And then how will we be looking at what we're looking at now? How will we look in 20 years of what we're looking at, what you're thinking right now? You know, things change. So, last image, yeah. and this is not a foolie, this is a people. <laughs> So this is a great image at the end of Enterprise yeah. in 2005. Have you ever seen this picture before? I have not. You may recognize some faces there. Oh, yeah. This is a yeah. picture. They had a reunion, and there's a little fudging on it, but not much. Um, the Berman's office wanted – everybody was feeling very sentimental at the end of <laughs> – from that time perspective. From the end of Enterprise, it wasn't just the end of the show. It, they thought of it as the end of the 18 years of, of modern Trek, yeah. right? Yeah. From 87 to 2005. And this is a picture from whatever their title or department was. This is a picture of everybody who worked on every moment of Star Trek from the beginning of Farpoint on Next Gen to the end of Enterprise. They found 18 mm -hmm. people. And you, you know Mike Okuda. You know maybe Ron D. FX Ron over there. Rick Berman's in the back. Peter Lord's next to him. Uh, the costume department lady is there in the front. Bill Wistrom, who was the head sound audio guy that no one ever saw his face or knew his name, but he was there. He died just a couple years later. But that's a picture of everyone who uh, – uh, uh, is it Bill Purvis or Larry Purvis? But the guy standing next to – on the left in the back was the assistant shop construction – set construction foreman for all 18 years. And some people even like retired from the industry after the Berman era was done. But my point here is – on one hand, it's great. We've pulled these guys together and gals for this wonderful celebratory picture, and we you know, honor them and all that. And as Star Trek creators, that's great. But there's a chunk of the world three months later, if they, if they wanted to keep pursuing, many of these people had been out of the employment picture for 18 years. And a lot of people who worked on the Star Treks who were rewarded for their longevity – in the reality of the real working world, the time perception is they've been out of employment, and Star Trek is seen as a very specific thing. There are a lot of people who – it wasn't just that Star Trek ended and they didn't have a steady paycheck. They could – they grew up working different jobs in the industry, but they had a hell of a time getting reestablished somewhere else because Star Trek was so specific, 
or because maybe they were in their 40s and 50s and the nature of their niche of the industry didn't lend itself to you know they their your their mentors their pack that they were with was all gone and they it was really hard for a lot of people to go out and find jobs again so on one hand you're celebrating your security blanket here for 18 years but it's like be careful what you wish for you may get it so the passage of time here on one hand they get honored on the other hand their lives are disrupted yeah when the job changes that's a hollywood thing but these people had been with it so long that the perception of them by people who would give them a job might have been a negative. So anyway, I didn't want to. I that was something that occurred to me is trying to add to this conversation too. Part of that yeah. whole being out of the flow and being back in is how others. Per, per, it's not just about your perception of where you've been and all that. Sometimes it's people perceiving that you've been too out of it. So I don't know if that if that gets a react. Did I surprise you here? That's my mission every week is to. Yeah, I think the 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 mini skirts. Um, it's it's not a surprise, but um, I like the way you're framing that about how um, we we are looking at the past through the lens of the present, and we do need to understand the historical context. Well, we um, talk about we say, oh, Star Trek, original Star Trek was so progressive and so radical, but then they had the mini skirts, you know. Yeah. But at the time, that was seen as pretty radical too. Yeah, yeah, and I think um, um, and Nichelle and Nichelle and, and Grace Lee wanted them. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, I think I think it's 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 a complex discussion, um, sexism and Star Trek, and there's there's times when Star Trek. Is right, and I wasn't trying to do a, a hand yeah, wave. Yeah, yeah, issue. but but I think that's you you need both. You need the perspective had, I, of and I and Ali. Not to, I'm sorry to interrupt you. But I've had women of of that era, women who were young girls in their teens and twenties in the sixties. Every time the conversation would drift toward, you know, and let's remember how how radical original Star Trek was, and we say, except for the miniskirts. I've had women jump up on in a comment thread or live and go, "Wait a minute, that was pretty damn radical," and a lot of us were yeah. cheering they had that. Yeah. So it's like, which is okay. Thank you, thank you for that. Yeah, which is uh, what Linda said here too. Is thank you, Larry. That's exactly what it was about. And I, I think you need. Um, we need both perspectives when we're trying right. to understand right. a moment in time is we need to understand context. the historical context. Exactly. We also Here's need to crown. understand. Here's yeah. And we need to understand how we look at it from a, from a modern lens and you can do both. You can, you can both love something and be critical of it and also understand the era in which it was created. Like all of these things are possible. We can, and we should absolutely be because that then reflects the back on where you are right now right right right, right. um just to uh this comment just uh charlotte i would love to see this is actually this would be a great thing to share in our discord community which by the way um we're really trying to build up our discord community folks there's a link in the in the description here to this video if you'd like to join we'd love to have you there but charlotte says um I saw a meme some months ago about how 2020 must be why the Starfleet uniforms in TNG era look like PJs. I think it also explains why the women's hairstyles are so elaborate on Star Trek. We can only see from the shoulders up on Zoom, hence wearing PJs but still doing your hair and makeup. I kind of love that because from here up, it is like a there's the multiple colors, there's, there's so much happening, but the rest of the outfit is... Ollie. Yeah. I I realized that I, my back pocket is wearing a hole where I wear my wallet, and I realized that someday I'm going to have to put down my COVID jeans. I mean, I'm going to have to like, – it's like, no, they're the jeans that got me through this year. I can't – yeah. I'm getting I mean, sentimental about this. Yeah. One day I'll have to dress up again. I don't think I've dressed up once in, in 2020. There's I never wore a suit. I never wore like my dress shoes. I never. Um, I, I don't think I've really worn like a like a very nice buttoned up shirt. <laughs> like a, I, like I, a... I I I wore a suit once for my wife's congregation's. Uh, she they had an event and everybody was on mm -hmm. Zoom, but they all dressed up to you know sanity's sake. And I've dressed up ish when I hosted the Starfleet um, cocktail party for uh, uh, the improv group here in the Next Gen. Um, and we had a three-hour interview thing, and I got to dress up a little then, 
but it was yeah it's all on zoom nothing ever live so yeah, and who knows what you were live. actually wearing all the way down the whole time oh but, uh, man what yeah. a world well let's do uh, let's do a little bit of a away mission this is where i give you mm. um some way to apply what we've been talking about to your own life and so um if you were listening closely during the counselor's log um, you, you probably picked up on how I was saying everything, everything's been the same. Everything has felt the same. And, um, this is a time in our lives, you know, we're at, we're at a very weird point in this pandemic, Larry, where there is some potential hope, but we're also like life hasn't changed too much. Um, so what, what, if you haven't already, this is the time to invest in novelty in new experiences <laughs> in different experiences. And, and what do I mean by that? Um, and thank you, Scott, for sharing the link to the article I mentioned um, about perception of time. Um, but one of the things I talk about in that article too is how we all need new experiences right now. So um, there's definitely a lot of benefit to revisiting um, things that you love. Um, so one of the things that rewatching like Star Trek episodes can do is it can actually help you to feel less lonely. Um, we have real relationships with these characters and just having it on is very comforting. So um, it, there's a huge benefit to that, especially when you're feeling lonely. But to deal with this rut of time, that it, when it does feel like time is a fire in which we burn and it's been a very slow burn through, um, through the 20s, which, yeah. by the way, Larry, um, I was listening to Octavia Butler again, um, and in, in one of her books, she talks about the decay of society and calls it this burn. And I wonder if the Discovery uh, writers uh, for season three were influenced I think, by that. I think now that you mentioned this, I think that was. They, were, they, yeah. they revealed that there was a – I haven't had a chance to talk to anybody live yet. But I think, and I think it was Octavia Butler's "The Burn" that they, that they took as yeah. an homage. it's 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 a it's this slow decay of society. Or they paid homage to um, it, yeah. which I think, yeah, it's 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 a and it's a it's a great homage there. Um, I love it. Anyways, um, if it feels like you've been in this slow burn of 2020, um, going into 2021. Uh, novelty is, is, is something to infuse in your life. And what I mean by that is experiences you haven't quite had. And I know we're, we're all stuck at home, but there's still some ways to do this. Whether it is um, watching a very different genre of TV, or um, mm. if you want to stick with sci-fi, exploring some science fiction you haven't yet explored, which is one of the reasons why I've been enjoying Octavia Butler's work so much, is it's so so very new to me and, and so different from other science fiction that I love. Um, or watching, picking up The Expanse now. Now is the time to mm -hmm. watch a very different show. Um, my wife and I, um, we really got into uh, non-English um, television. It It's like, I don't know what it is. Subtitled but, um, or, or what? Subtitled, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's different. Um, it's... They all take place in non-America, which is great um, because non you're like oh, <laughs> you're trying to understand. Oh, how does how do these things there work? There is such a place. Um, yes. There, yeah. <laughs> um, you're also seeing very different actors than you've ever seen mm -hmm. before. Different kind of humor. Um, it it I have to filters. be more. Yeah. yeah, and I have to be plugged in more because I have to read the subtitles. Um, so the one, the thing we're most into right now is, uh, Korean dramas and we've been watching, um, Crash Landing on You, which is, um, uh, a Korean drama that's on Netflix. Um, and that's just been, it's one of our highlights of the day because it's so different from everything we're used to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, same thing with music, Larry, this is one of the reasons people tried different skills, um, like baking and things like that. Um, I want to make it simple, like whatever you like to do as a pastime, find some ways to get a new spin on it, something that's different. Larry, one of the, the, uh, the most fun I've had here on Life Support Live is learning how to do a live stream. I had never really done something. I was going to say, part of the new people. here is learning how to adapt and, sur and survive, but it's, it's learning survival skills. But this whole tech, I was, I realized last week with my one of my business coach that this big project that I was going to start 
that we're doing now for 2021, I was like, oh, wait, I was actually going to do this in January of 2020. <laughs> and something blew me out of the water. Oh, survival. Right. It's like I couldn't do that. <laughs> I had to I had to come over here. Yeah. Research everything, live streaming. And, and even though I'd been live streaming for uh, not live streaming, been going virtual uh, on free conference call with Portal 47, everybody was Zooming by then, and that became the dominant way, and I eventually adapted that way. But everything we've done with, with the multi-streaming here and, and learning that world, and, and even with a lot more still to go, and even with that, with those companies, you know, thank goodness we had that, as I've said many times, thank goodness this, this pandemic didn't happen 15 or 20 years ago, because I just, maybe our tech curve would have accelerated like, you know, uh, R and D during a war, or even the space the space race, but uh, thank God we had this now to keep us help us keep sane and help keep aspects of society and civilization moving along on some kind of a life a life thread. But um, but yeah, just keeping up with all that has been enough new for me, or or figuring out not just the tech, but how do we take the normal thing, like how do we produce a show or have a graduation. Or how do we have sports, and how do we cram it through yeah. the pandemic yeah. filter with this tech? How how can we take normal and adapt it through tech for the times? And people have been very creative about doing that. Whether whether we were in that industry or not, just watching it happen was kind of yeah, very know. interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's been very interesting. So at least enough to uh, keep our minds not you know fire some neurons and not let us be numbed into nothingness. Yeah, and I would say the the milestones My new novel, that do Dumb stick out. Nothingness will be out next month. <laughs> um, the the times that I do remember with my wife are uh, from 2020 are these times like the different eras of trying new things that we were doing, um, and it was mostly new shows and new music and um, that kind of stuff does stick out of my mind. So. Whoever you are, whatever you're interested in, um, find some way to explore new directions. Like Scott just mentioned, um, he's watching the German series Dark. Um, uh, and, and, you know, there's there's a lot of ways. Um, that makes sense. Books, uh. books music, TV, uh, movies, um, cooking, eating. You know, there's so many ways in which we can get some novelty in our life. So... Uh, yeah, that's the away mission, Larry. Um, I think this that's one cool. is uh, uh, one we can all kind of start applying to our lives. And with that, yeah. we've got just a few minutes left. Let's uh, open up those hailing frequencies. Yeah. And um, I have a couple yeah. things in the chat. Just and the guys, uh, apologies again. I just wanted to shout out to Robert McLean. He did a long post. If you go back and find it on the YouTube version, you can find it if you can't scroll back. But I he did like a poetry of this. It was a long piece, and I was like, did you just did you just write that out or did is that something you'd already written? But it was a really good meditative essay kind of poem almost about um, time and our perspective and the lockdown. And, and anyway, it was, it was a very nice, very nice um, little, uh, a little uh, word uh, sonata there. And I just want to say, I appreciate it. And then also, and now I've forgotten who said it. Someone's had, we were talking about time is the fire in which we burn. <laughs> and somebody said, time is the gum on the bottom of my shoe. <laughs> Maybe you can pop up oh, I found that. um, I found Robert. So I'm gonna put this up right now for anyone who's who's watching it. Um, uh, it was at the ten thirty mark. I yeah, did like taking away the moments that make up a dull day. Um, uh, filter fritter and waste the hours in and out, uh, in and off hand, uh, kicking around on a piece of ground in your hometown. Yeah, uh, waiting for someone or something to show you the way. Um, yeah, no, uh, thank you, Robert. I completely missed this. I didn't even see it, so I just put it on the screen. Um, I'll put it back up for people who have missed well, it. Well, lagging is the fire in which I burn, apparently, so, um... <laughs> By the way, I had five... When I had my braces put on, they pull. I had way too many teeth from my jaw. My jaw was undersized, which would amaze most people today, I think. But, uh, they pulled four teeth and then a fifth one later. I had four teeth... Oh, wow! Put, in one sitting when I was, you know, 12 or 11, 12, 13, something well, old enough to have there. everything. But I was drugged and it was gas and, you know, who knows, whatever. Robert says, I am an actual poet, Larry. I um, knew that. Yeah, I knew that. That's why the word came <laughs> to mind so easily. <laughs> my, uh, my daughter's um, really into Peppa Pig right now. 
And um, Daddy Pig always says, I am a bit of an expert in such things. <laughs> um, so Robert, he just gave me some, some of those vibes. I am a bit of a poet, Larry. Um. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Christoph mentioned that Priority One, my sister, my, my brethren... Uh, show on Roddenberry to Trek Files is having their 500th episode. So if, if once you leave oh us gosh. here today, you might wander over. I'm going to try to jump in there sometime today. I didn't, I didn't set up something formal with them, so I hope I can do that. Just to say, oh, can you? Speaking of uh, things coming up, can you pop, uh, yes. pop up my last K3 up? Just so everybody knows, uh, good. There's a lot of things coming up here in our life support uh, realm, guys and gals. Uh, one of them is, I think I mentioned it earlier. For some crazy reason, blame it on the pandemic and lockdowns and shutdowns and all that. But I've got three panels coming virtually with with uh, WonderCon at the end of the month. And the schedule is up now. You can go to WonderCon. Anyway, you can go to LarryDemitrek.com and see my blog about my three and a link to uh, – a Trek movie did a story about everything that's Trek-related. One of them is the Voyager documentary, and I'm moderating the team uh, but one of them was we did a one-hour version of Life Support, and hopefully we'll have some new eyeballs see that. So that's coming up too, and then I also did another panel. But we will – I will have the na- – the dates and times are out. We'll talk about them next week. But what I wanted to pop up here was uh, just a thing that I'm doing at Trekland. Uh, my 200th – we're coming up on our 50th episode here, which is amazing. Um, over on my Trekland Tuesdays Live at 1 o'clock Pacific every, after, every week, uh, 5 o'clock Eastern – nine uk time and 10 central europe that is until we get into the two weeks of weird summer times and we're going to figure that out coming up in a week but most of the time i will say 10 a.m pacific uh, or i'll say 1 p.m pacific for tuesdays live and i'm coming up on my 200th tuesdays live episode we're going to have some uh giveaways and I've got something special so if you're not over on my trekland facebook page which covers everything but go over there. I'm going to throw out, throw the door open on a theme. But also go to LarryNimitschek.com. There's a very simple thing there. Get into a drawing for one of these two books. I've got the new DS9 handbook, and I've got a copy of um, the Lost Star Trek scenes, the film clip scenes, very big coffee table book. So that's a little a throw out there. In a couple of weeks, it'll be my 200th episode there, and we're going to have a, draw, a live drawing on the air. So jump over and get in for those giveaways now and stay tuned because because someone is going to help me come up with the theme for that episode and then again we're going to have our 50th here in a couple of weeks uh the disco the disco the discord channel is part the of disco. our 50th uh, anniversary um i think what uh, else do we i think about that? i think um robert is saying that um that comes from pink floyd um from dark side of the moon so i think that that's where that's coming from I thought Unless it was a line from uh, the Joker in the original Batman '89. Oh wait, that's Pale Moonlight. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever danced with two doctors uh, in the early Saturday hours? <laughs> oh, folks. Um, yeah, Larry. Well, maybe we should wrap things up um, yep, and play yep. the not so happy music. I think is what the not so happy called it. Yeah, so let me um, let me fire that up, and while we're doing that, um, yeah, folks, we we had a great time recording our um, our episode uh, for WonderCon, so you'll you'll see that soon. Thank you to TrekMovie.com for uh, for sharing that out on their website this mm-hmm. week. They they listed out all the Star Trek panels at uh, WonderCon, and um, we were uh, we were a part of that. So thank you to them. Mm-hmm. Um, in what fact, I have, we, are at, yeah. we are at four p. Stay tuned because I'm I'm trying to come up with a way. I would love for us to figure out a way to have some kind of a live event when it premieres. I don't know how we'd do that, but right now, but because WonderCon has their own portal, but stay tuned for that, everybody. But that's at four o'clock Pacific on Friday, the twenty sixth, the last Friday of March, whatever that. I think it's the twenty sixth. And then right after that is my moderating the one hour panel with the Voyager team. So they're back to back. And then I have a panel. Awesome. On. Yeah. Oh, so no, yes, nice. we, our I'm life support we're... one hour is at four o'clock Pacific Friday. So yeah, seven... if you want a little a little sneak preview, we kind of looked back at 2020 with the biggest lessons we've learned and looking ahead to 2021, how to guide us guide us forward. So I think it, it's a good if uh, yep. it's the it'll the feel both familiar lesson. and different. Yes. yes. 
yeah, the Star yeah, Trek yeah. TV lessons of 2020. Yeah. 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 Um, so, Larry, I don't really have much going on this week besides the just the usual. It's a wreck, man. You had an insane week last week. Yeah, a lot of a lot of work. It's a it's a busy it's a busy time. Um, but um, yeah, you you can see me um, on my YouTube channel, youtubecom slash show is where I'm at, and I'm at Alima2 on social media. And uh, what about you, Larry? I, well, I mentioned LarryNimichuk.com. You can go register for our 200th, and if you can, you don't have to be live and present to win. I realize because it won the afternoon Pacific. That's still four Eastern, so that's. Uh, but yeah, LarryNimichuk.com at LarryNimichuk on Twitter, where you're watching us right now, is at LarryNimichuk's Trekland on Facebook. That's also my Instagram. Yeah. Um, yeah. As Glinda says, live on and party on most excellent people um, we we so rarely get to read the uh, goodbyes on on air but i love i love all of yours um, i hate i'm skipping ahead i'm skipping ahead guys i'm sorry i'm sorry uh and for uh, everybody who was new with us this week that i didn't get to do a shout out to i see maybe a couple especially on youtube here um uh, uh heather hernandez if you're new with us uh hello and thanks um I don't know. I always feel so. Uh, un- I always feel uh, badly here that I didn't get to like yell at more people. I saw Paul Newitt talking about interviewing Fra- French Joseph. So yes, truck well, everybody. Live long and prosper.